Welcome to another edition of Conversations with Craig. This is edition number four. We'll call it the Brett Favre edition since he is the most famous number four I can think of and one of my personal favorites. Today we are joined with our two soccer coaches. We've got Paul Crumpy coming off a, another outstanding year where they made the NCAA tournament as an at-large team this past year. And we've got our new women's soccer coach, Jenny Binden, who has joined us in January and then this hit. So congratulations on that. But we will uh, hear from them today and, and find out how they are dealing with everything. And Welcome, uh, coaches. So we'll start with you, Coach Crumpy. Uh, as, as a veteran coach, obviously this is something that is very, very unique. How did you notify your team kind of on that Thursday? Because we were on spring break. So how did you notify them that things were, were happening? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a, a group chat app that we reach out to them and uh so we sent uh a notice out to them to let them know where we were and what was going on and then in the past couple of weeks we've now stayed in touch with them um with phone calls uh myself and my two assistants Mike Segarra and Kyle Schmidt we've been reaching out to each one of the players um once each week so that's 75 phone calls to reach out and stay in touch last week i was on a uh, an academic meeting with them a zoom academic meeting so i got to see their faces um and then uh we're planning on having a a zoom meeting with everybody just the team next week as well so actually later this week did, did any of the student athletes have anything exciting going on in the background of the Zoom call? Anything, uh, anything weird? Anything? Nothing, crazy? nothing of note and probably nothing I could uh, um, share here anyway. But, uh, <laughs> That's good. But yes, they are much more creative than, than I am in, in that regard. <laughs> and, and Jenny, uh, your team obviously was in, in the midst of spring practice. You're trying to establish a a great culture for your program and we're really making some strides this spring in doing that. How do you maintain that? It, first of all, how did you notify your team? And then how do you maintain that uh, culture building that you're, you're still trying to, to get going here? Yeah, we're similar to what, what Paul's done with the men's team. We, we have a app that we use. So we kind of sent that out. And I mean, I think like, like Paul, our kids were on uh, spring break. So it's kind of just, and at first it was like, what do we do in this short time? Not realizing it was going to be, you know, week, what are we week three, four now coming up, depending on some uh, situations, but um, we just contacted them, kind of worked through it. Um, but we're, we're doing some really uh, cool things. We, we meet actually three times a week on a team zoom call. And then we've divided up the team and our coaches have their own, small groups that they contact throughout the week. Uh, we've used Embrace some really cool apps like House Party. So we basically have uh, Mondays are our, our touch base days where we just see, we have an agenda that we go through for the week. Uh, Wednesdays are a technical uh, session that we put on that's either um, the girls kind of run or we run. And then Fridays is our uh, fun Fridays where we use the House Party app and divided the group up and everybody just kind of played games. So trying to, we had a hoodie Friday where everyone wore their hoodies because that's how they most of them dress anyway when they turn up to the meetings. So the whole staff was in hoodies. So it was kind of fun. We're just trying to keep it really lighthearted, but also really making sure we're connecting with them. I really enjoyed, like, I've had to be innovative. We were, you know, we just came off of a 1-0 defeat, a really uh, quality game that we, we, we were pretty proud of that we played against UCLA. Um, so then having to turn that around uh, with them all gone and, and trying to keep building on culture when, I didn't really even know where the girls were going back to. I don't know them, uh, you know, like what their home environments are and learning where they're, they're at, but it's been kind of cool with these Zoom calls because you can see where they are. And yeah, we're just asking to them to embrace this opportunity to grow and learn um, behind a computer, which um, I mean, that's technology, right? They're, they're all pretty up to date with it. How, how does this change recruiting? Because obviously this is a time, and I don't know your specific recruiting calendars uh, that well, but there's obviously a, an evaluation time, which is either now or, or coming up, where you'd be able to go out and recruit and watch some of those, those players in the future. How do you do that now uh, when you're not able to evaluate in person or live? So I'll, I'll start with you, Paul. I mean, long story short, we're, we have to watch a lot of video now, right? Um, 
you know, we, uh, you can't, like you said, you can't go out in person. So um, we're, we're counting on reaching out to some of the club coaches that we know, um, get feedback from them, but also when we um, are recruiting somebody, we, we depend on being able to watch them with video. And um, it's kind of the only way we can do things. I don't know whether Jenny has another way to do that, but that's where we are right now. No, we're pretty much similar as you, Paul. Like, there's not a lot we can do. We're still getting, uh, you know, film and we're watching. But even the players, I don't know, some of them, I get uh, individual, them, what they're doing at home during this time, which can show their character. Um, but, um, yeah, same, just watching video as a staff. We kind of evaluate. Um, we kind of have a, a system of what we're looking for. And then um, each staff member will evaluate it and then we'll discuss it. But. There's nothing like actually recruiting live, right, Paul? Like it's just different when you can be there on the sideline and watch them versus behind the I mean, screen. For, for years, it was always, I wouldn't recruit unless I could actually watch kids live. Uh, but now this is kind of where we are and it looks like this, this period's getting extended through the middle or, or the end of May now. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is and we, we just got to find a way around it. Um, the good thing for us is we've got a great class coming in already for next year. It just puts a little bit of a hindrance on uh, what we're capable of doing for the junior class and the sophomore class. And I know that's harder on the women's side because you guys generally recruit a year ahead of us. Uh, yeah, well, now with the, the changeover, right, with the rule change, I think we, we're already set up. I mean, some of those kids had committed. Um, there were eighth graders committing, and yeah. well, I think that, during this time, it's not as big of an issue as it might be for other sports, but if this continues, it will, it will be hard for that. There are still, you know, you're missing those 21s, 22s that you can actually reach out to, but like my recruiting class for 21 and, and is, is pretty much set. There's maybe one or two that you'd pick up, but um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a challenge, but it, everyone's in the same boat, right? Well, and I think that is the key, you know, I think that the, the consistent theme that has emerged as we've spoken on these uh, Zoom calls here with coaches is that everybody is kind of in the, whoa, we went dark here in my <laughs> office and they've got the automatic turn off lights. Hold on. This is, this is, oh, there, I'm, I'm live again. Well, that, if you're listening on the audio only version, that was uh, probably something that was really unique. But what I was saying is the coaches are all on, on a level playing field right now in terms of recruiting. And I think that's the one thing that you have to remind yourself. Coaches worry so much about somebody getting a competitive advantage over them. And in this time, uh, you know, those you gotta be pretty creative to try to come up with some kind of competitive advantage when everybody's at home in, in some way, shape or form. What, in terms of this fall, obviously Paul, uh, you know, you've got a, a great team coming back, a team that went to the NCAA tournament Certainly, you won't be projected uh, in the WCC for, was it seventh? Is that right? No, we were or was actually eighth. Eighth. We were eighth. eighth. Okay, yeah. It's a pick, and that is actually last because there are only eight teams that play on the men's side. So, right. had a tremendous year, finished in second in the WCC and got in that large bid. What are you most looking forward to for this upcoming year? Well, I'm just looking to continue the growth that we – we put on the field last year. Um, we, we only lost two seniors of a group that um, went to the NC2A tournament, went six and one in the conference. Um, so we're really excited about the group that we've got returning. We did tinker with the, the, our formation a little bit in the spring and worked with a, a, different, a different look. Um, but now I feel like we've got the ability to run two different formations depending on the opponent uh, as we build into the fall. So I think we've added a little bit of a, of a dynamic um, dimension to our, 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 our team. And so I'm just expecting the guys, if they continue the growth that they put in from last year, we're going to be in a very good situation going into next year. And, and Jenny, obviously entering a first year, uh, what kind of what are you looking forward to the most in the fall when you can actually begin training? 
Yeah, I think we're I think we're all looking forward to just getting back on the pitch. But um, you know, I think it's a great group of girls. I think there's some quality players that we have. You know, we have some seniors that are, are pretty excited to come back this year and and step up, and um, that that's that's really good for us. I'm really excited about um, the the culture if we can build in the shift that the girls are taking ownership for their 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 what they're putting on the park, right? So what they're going to go and do. And, and understanding their why of the decisions that they make. So really kind of shifting that mentality that they're in control of their game. Um, I think, you know, our formations, well, we're just trying to all get on the same page. So we're working through some playing styles and principles, which we're trying to do tactically, which we would have to do anyway. It's just now we're kind of stuck doing it behind a computer. Um, but we have some good, good players coming in um, of a freshman class. There's a, some, some quality players that we're getting. Um, you know, the, the previous staff had done a really good job recruiting. So happy with that. And then we've, we've, we've added a couple of players uh, through the transfer portal that we're really, really excited about. So I think we're in a positive uh, place. I think that, um, you know, uh, as soon as we can get back playing, um, you know, the girls are working hard behind the scenes. And I think we're establishing a really positive culture. And that's going to be the biggest shift, Craig, is, is, is where we are as a, as a team culture wise. And then uh, if we can get that piece right, then the talent that these individual talent that these girls have will 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 show on the park. How how do you recruit to campus when campus isn't open? And so the, maybe those unofficial visits that would occur, or even official visits that would. Occur, and I don't know the, again the recruiting calendars real well. Sorry, Thad, if you're actually tuning in. Uh, but what? How do you do that? Because one of the greatest selling points that we have is this particular campus it, it's one of the most if not the most gorgeous campus in the country and you're not able to bring people here so how do you sell that or portray that when you're speaking to recruits right now well i, I was just going to say it, it, it might be a little difficult to do that with recruits right now if they haven't visited but we we've run uh several id clinics in the past um several years usually three or four a year, and had opportunities to get a lot of those kids onto campus. Of the seven guys that we've signed coming in next year, I would probably say there's four or five that have come to those ID clinics and had that opportunity to come onto campus. So until we get back to that point, it's a little bit difficult to continue in that vein. Um, but uh, the fact that we had such a good year last year helps. Uh, it certainly helps us in recruiting because um, a lot of times instead of us necessarily reaching out to the student athletes, they're reaching out to us because they've seen what we're capable of and, and would like to be here with us. Jenny, any thoughts on trying to sell the beautiful campus we have? Uh, and I know you've been able to do it anyway, because even with the, tra the transfer portal, I know you're pretty active there to try to find anybody. How do you, kind of ex extend that uh, opportunity virtually? Well, we've kind of like, um, I don't know, uh, we've kind of found some video that the LMU has produced and we've kind of cut that around so that you can see the campus, but there's nothing, like you said, I mean, until you actually come on campus and you actually get the feel of what LMU offers, it's really hard to portray that through video. Um, I mean, that's one of the, selling points of the campus then is is one of the selling points is the campus and the feel that it brings so trying to translate that onto a video um has been difficult but it still worked for us and i think a lot comes down to the people right so we have such a great um i'm really happy with our staff and what they offer and getting gina uh, brewer on board with us has been great um you know with jess and kevin like all there's just a really quality staff and when the people actually talk to us, the parents or the players, then it's a sense of kind of selling that part of it. And, and the girls are just a, a step to that as well. So I don't know if you have ideas. I, I mean, hopefully I know yeah, that whole season like crumpy and then they'll want to come as well. So exactly. No, I think you're right. First of all, yeah, you have a season like, like coach crumpy and, and it, it changes things obviously, but you you bring up a great point. One of the main features is not only our campus, but the people here. And I think you lose that opportunity 
uh, obviously, if you're not on campus, to get a good gauge of the people, not just the people in the athletic department. I think LMU is such a special place with the people on campus that care so much about this institution, and you really get that when you're on an a unofficial or an official visit. Uh, let's switch gears for a second here, Paul. Have you settled into some type of routine at home? Is, is, are people there sick of you yet, or what, what's happening? <laughs> I, I tried to post a video about my my ten uh, year old lab Abby that she, or Maggie that she just doesn't understand this coronavirus thing because I she I keep taking her on walks uh, I go I have a routine and somehow that's spilled over into her routine now and she doesn't understand why she's getting taken out so often uh, but but I'm trying to um, walk every other day. Uh, and lift after that. I've got a, some, a setup in my garage. And then on those other days, I'm either biking or running. Uh, but, it's, but it's difficult and it's not, you know, it's, it's not exciting. I'd much rather be doing stuff with the team. Prior to this, I was lifting with the team at our 6.30 a.m. Uh, weight training sessions, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I'm, I'm missing that right now. But, uh, but I do have a kind of a general routine that I'm trying to go through. But but my dogs do not understand. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've, I've seen some pretty good memes out there uh, with dogs in general, because I think they, yeah. they're clearly confused as to why there are so many walks that are occurring. I mean, they, why, they won't like you ever, walked, why won't you ever yeah. go away? Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm tired of the whole walking thing at this point. I mean, I, I get that. But so it sounds like, Paul, you're going to come back pretty buff based on what I just I'm heard. working on it. I'm working on it. it. That's good. That's good. What about you, Jenny? How uh, how is is life at the Binden residence? The Binden residence. Uh, we're doing pretty good. We have a routine we try to stick to. Um, I still have a a 15 year old that is a freshman at Redondo Union, and he's still in school. It's Easter break, so we're letting him sleep in uh, today. But usually he's up and moving, and uh, we just try to stick to a plan. Very fortunate that my husband um, works from home anyway, so he kind of keeps us all in, in line of how his normal day lives. So we kind of, I'm eating more because I usually am one of those people that skips lunch, uh, but now we, he cooks lunch every day. So I don't know if I'm going the other way, I think. I need to get on Paul's uh, regime, but yeah. I, I think I'm falling into that, that category. I, I think I'm probably exercising more because there's a little bit more time to do that, but there's also food available 24 uh, seven, which is, which is a little bit scary. Easy How, access. Had, yeah, no. Had, so has Grant given you some good tips on what to do when you're at home? How to kind of be in that home office? Jenny, have you figured that out? Yeah, because I think I'm one of those people. I love to work, right? I'm like a little bit of a workaholic. So, I am, you know, if I'm, if I'm in front of my computer, I can go pretty, you know, good 10, 10, 12 hours at it. And he's like, nope, let's go. We're off to do a walk. So we, we have a regime that we go through. We get up, we do the morning coffees. Um, you've been listening to either a podcast or kind of reading through. I'm doing the um, uh, John Gordon positivity. I don't know if anyone else is doing oh, that. Oh, yeah. But um, so listen to one of those and then come down and catch up with staff and get into the day and then break for lunch and we go for a family walk. Our dog is the same. Uh, Coach Crumpy, it's the same. He, She's like, wait, why is everyone here? Can you guys please leave? <laughs> I'm not getting my sleep. <laughs> But um, yeah, so she's usually by one of us. She's here here now. But um, no, we're we're just doing our thing. We're lucky. I like my family, so that's a good thing. No, that that is a, that's a great thing. This is another question. Have either of you watched Tiger King? I have not. You haven't, uh, Jenny. What do you think? Um, I feel more normal. <laughs> and, no, that's uh, a good. I think a good I thing. think uh, I think Carol did it. Yeah, 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 that's a good, that, that seems to be a prevailing thought. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler alert, Paul, if you get there, uh, Carol did it. Okay. it. Yeah. The other, the other spoil alert is that's not him singing, which uh, Tom, yeah. Tom told really me that. Disappointing. Yeah. Really disappointing, because he actually, you know what, he has some potential. Yeah. Like, yeah. he actually is pretty solid. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Bring All back right, well, Paul Anything else that either of you'd like to kind of close with before we shut it down for episode four? I would just say, you know, to remind everybody just to ride this out and stay safe. Um, I've been telling my guys, you know, with their, if they're living with their parents right now or their grandparents to do their best to, to look out for them 
and and take care of them but they've also got to make sure they're taking care of their taking care of their, themselves stay at home as much as they can and and also if they have some some time obviously they're busy with their studies as well you know the majority of the rest of the country is probably um just bunkering down right now so if they have an opportunity to do anything they can get a jump start on on next season and kind of you know catch um you know land on the on the ground running rather than you know starting from from scratch when we get it together again uh, next year yeah i think for me i just want to really give a shout out to our sports performance i think they've done an amazing job carrying the torch of bringing this unity amongst our student athletes and even even the, the coaches as well so Coach D and, and, and those guys have done a, an amazing job. Um, also, huge thank you. I know some of our, our athletes' parents are on the front lines um, and they're dealing with this as well as family members and friends. So a huge thank, thank you to those people. And I think the best thing you can do is stay home, be safe, and like Paul said, like use this time wisely and, and challenge yourself more in the mental space, the tactical space, and, um, you know, make sure that you're staying fit, healthy, and looking after your loved ones. But wash your hands, do everything you can to um, help help uh, flatten the curve. No, that, that, that's great. I appreciate uh, both of you for those great thoughts here at the end, and thank you for joining us on Conversations with Craig, the Lou Gehrig episode, because Lou Gehrig might actually be greater than Brett Favre. Uh, he's number four also. <laughs> so thank you, and go Lions. Go Lions. Go Lions.